Okay, so now we're recording and then I'm just looking at your questions then. So I read about how um, you started a while ago and you were starting alongside a coworker and that worked out. How, how, how what, what was that situation like? Well, um, he already had worked for the company and he was fluent in Spanish. And I feel like, so my, we, we had a lot of business in Spain. And so that's why my, um, our, the owner had offered to pay for me to take Spanish classes. And I feel like he felt a little threatened. So he wasn't very helpful or supportive in that regard, you know? So then it got to the point is like, there wasn't any opportunity for me to really be using Spanish at work why the and why the owner had been willing to do this so I felt guilty about continuing so oh, yeah and how long ago was that before LALC uh 25 years ago oh wow so like that that was enough to discourage you for 25 years you're like nope not not doing this again well no not really that but life took T took some twists and um, I, I lived in Germany on and off for eight years in between. So mm -hmm. <laughs> there wasn't really a reason because I didn't, you know, and now it became more prevalent that I, I needed to do something and not just because of work, but because I kind of really wanted to. And now I had the, I had two excuses to do it, you know? Definitely. Um, and then I also wanted to follow up with like um, Latin America in general. So I know you were in Germany for a while. and so yeah. In German, right? Or yeah, I have a I have an undergrad degree in German, and I went to university there for a year, okay. and then as an adult, I lived there for and worked for another uh, maybe total of seven plus years. So wow. yeah. Oh, and did you really like it over there? Um, n not so much, and that's what I was kind of alluding to in when I was talking about the culture and what I liked about it is the people being so open because people in the German culture are very, very closed, you know, and it's very hard to meet and, and make friends. So I get, you get a different sense from, they're very rigid and, and that you don't get that impression or I don't get that impression from people in Latin America at all. Yeah. Yeah. Which, um, I saw that. And then I saw that you were, um, for your job, you're in charge of like the Americas in general. And you had someone who was basically working with you with Latin American offices, it seemed like. So, you know, having worked in Germany for so long and learning the language and everything like that. So what brought you back to Latin America aside from that? Like, what, did you always have an interest in Latin America? Um, off and on, I did. Um, I did, um, a few years ago, I was dating a guy who's from Buenos Aires for about three years. So, you know, you would have thought that would have been more of an incentive to like learn a language, but at least I ate well because <laughs> I, I tried a lot of different foods, that's for sure. <laughs> and he loved to cook, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's funny because sometimes significant others can be the driving force and sometimes that's not necessarily the case. Like I, yeah. like before I met my husband, like I, two of my previous um, partners had been fluent Spanish speakers, but I never spoke Spanish with them. And they would always ask me like, hey, can you help me improve my Spanish? And I'm like, um, you know, like I was in school, I didn't really have the time for it type of thing yeah. more. But now with my husband, he actually, um, he was born in Arkansas, so he doesn't, he grew up speaking English, and now I speak Spanish with him a lot more, so yeah, definitely, the fact that yeah. you're, you're a significant other doesn't necessarily influence that. Time. No, because he, he never did, and you know what, it's funny, we're kind of friends, you know, and I've told him, you know, that I've been taking Spanish class, and every time I see him, I'm like hoping that we'll switch to Spanish so I can, like, practice, and I can, I just sense that he doesn't want to do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I, I get it. There, there are moments where that kind of happens. It's like, oh, uh, yeah. So that's cool. So you always had that interest there. And so what, I guess, I know you said that, I, you, I, I saw that you read, or I read that you said that finally after letting your manager go, you're like, okay, I'm going to do this again. So that, yeah. yeah. So well, how and when did you start with the LALC? So I started uh, the very end of September, actually. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I had let this guy go in July. And then I had kind of been toying with the idea for a while. And like I had said, for 
up until then, because I had someone working for me who was taking care of this, taking care of the region, um, that there wasn't really an incentive, incentive, but then it was like, I wasn't getting right information out of them, you know, was part of the problem, you know, and like, I don't ever want to be in that position again. And so I need to know enough to be dangerous. And when I let him go, um, it was like, well, joking that I know German really isn't so funny anymore. And two, uh, we had some other reorganization within the region as far as the sales teams were concerned. So when I made the marketing manager in our in the office in Mexico City redundant, they all got a little nervous, you know, that what did this mean for what what kind of message did this send for all of um uh, the the LATAM region, you know. So part of it was, you know, I also thought, well, this had some other benefits because I was showing to them that we were still committed by that I was that I was doing this. Um and also because I hadn't spent I and I still don't really necessarily need to spend so much time talking to them all individually because of our uh seniority in the company. Um but you know, because they, most of them do, their their day-to-day -day work is always in Spanish and they don't have lots of opportunities to speak in English. Um, they're more comfortable now when they have to send emails to me for work, you know, because they see that I'm willing to make a fool out of myself trying to speak to them, you know? So it's had benefits that way, really. Yeah, like a little bit of camaraderie between. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're meeting halfway, like, you know, you know a little bit of Spanish, we know a little bit of English, like, there's, you know, yeah. common ground there. That's, that's yeah. good. That sounds really cool. Um, so my follow-up question um, with LALC has been, you know, uh, what is your learning style, if you have one, and how has LALC accommodated to that learning style or complemented it? Um, well, part of, part of the way, what I like about it is, and when I had done research online, and I think I had written about this too, and like it had uh, good marks as far as reviews and stuff, it was one of the only places that allowed for uh, private lessons. And that was really important to me because I travel a lot for work. So it wasn't like I could be in group classes that were scheduled the same day time every week because I knew I would miss them and that wouldn't be so uh, important or I mean, wouldn't work out well, you know, it'd be. And the other thing was I, I've done this without asking my company to pay for it. So it's out of my own pocket. So I'm holding myself accountable that way. And with the private classes, again, you can't hide behind other people. So I, I can't not show up to class without being prepared. And then also because, again, back to my colleagues, because they're willing to take time out of their work day every week to spend half an hour with me. I make sure that I'm not wasting their time. So I make sure that I'm prepared for that as well. So that's been part of it. The other thing I really like about class particular is like we usually start out um, class with a game, you know, which I find some of them aren't as easy, you know, even though it's probably for a third grade or something. But last week, like I, I won it at, at Hangman and I was like, yes, you know, so that, that's kind of fun, and it, I think that's a good way to, as an adult, to learn, you know, than just book work, because we're so, especially since you're, if you have a, have a full-time job, it's hard to, like, then go home and focus on actually studying, so that kind of thing works for me. The other thing is, and I mentioned it is, I have it here, is I use note cards for all my all my vocabulary words <laughs> it's too big for me to go through the whole stack anymore but so like i'll write all my new vocabulary words and i just like during the day so that i learn them and it's not like i go home and have to dedicate a focused time then you know so that helps a lot too yeah, yeah. definitely oh I'm, I'm glad that the private lessons and everything is like helping you and that's actually really interesting about accountability because it is it's true like sometimes you can show up to class and you're like uh, okay, there's pressure off me because there's there's always people in different classes, right? Like there's the one who answers everything. There's the one who's kind of like passive and, you know, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. You see that. And some people are a little bit more introverted. So if they're in a group situation and there's people who dominate, mm -hmm. they they get quiet, you know? And I tend to be one of those people too, in English as well. So 
you know, I just am not good in larger groups. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what has been your favorite lesson so far? I know Mara is your teacher. Um, yeah. What has been your favorite, like, concept to cover? Because I think you're pretty advanced now, right? You're at intermediate. With yeah, I just started intermediate. Um, well, actually, I think I'm, I'm really enjoying the class that we just started because I'm learning imperatives. And I was saying to Mara last week when, when we started this, oh, I'm excited because I tend to be very bossy at work, you know, especially in my position, like now I can be bossy in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's also like not just like um, commands too. It's also like suggestions and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's cool. Like it's like, it's like you could read it either way. Either like someone's giving you advice or someone's, you know, giving you, you know. so that's cool. Yeah. Exactly. Or like even in English, as long as you say please and thank you. <laughs> exactly. Um, so what is your favorite imperative verb so far then? Like, or phrase? Oh, gosh. Let's see, we just started that. So I'm just memorizing the different forms at the moment. So I don't know that I have um, a favorite phrase yet, to be perfectly honest. That's probably coming. Yeah. yeah. I, I, feel, I feel like um, I feel like there's probably going to be a lot of like um, colloquialisms that I'm going to like, you know, le learn that I, you know, that are equivalent to something else in English. Like, oh, I got to remember that one. Exactly. Um, no, imperative is really interesting. I, I like it's um, I'd say it's very commonly used. And it's so funny when other people come to class and they're like, I thought give this was damelo or something like that. I'm like, yeah, it is, but we're not there yet. Like, you know, damelo and then, or dimelo or something. Yeah. Like and so, yeah, it's, so I bet you're really excited right now. Cause like, I've heard these things. Now I know what they mean. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's funny too, now that we think about it or we're talking about this. So this morning I had the, the, uh, the news on the Spanish uh, news. So I had the close caption it doesn't matter there was a commercial on and and they said and i'm like that's one of the imperatives that we're just learning you know so that's fun you know to be able to put it together like that definitely and especially with like a lot of the um uh the news in spanish right now uh like when they say like they you know the 40 suggests that you do this you do that blah blah x y and z those are all going to be imperatives um because yeah. the commands are also kind of like in the middle of command suggestion like you know, we strongly urge you to do this, and then they use the imperative for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and that leads me to the next one. So, like, I saw that you actually incorporate Spanish into your life quite a lot. Like, you know, <laughs> like all this other sorts of stuff. So, like, um, yeah, like, I, what, what out of all these things, like, now, now that you're incorporated in your life, aside from news, like, how has it enriched your life? Like, do you just have, like, an, a wider access to different, like, you know, media? Like, I saw you have HBO, and, you know, and you're putting that in Spanish. Yeah, so, yeah, I didn't, I never actually, I didn't actually have a Netflix account until I started L at LA, LALC, you know, and, and Mara had recommended, you know, to do that and start watching some of these things. And then um, I moved into a new place in January. So then I got, I had a box TV at my old place. So you didn't put Netflix or all these other things on it at the time. So then I have, the, I managed to put Netflix on my TV now that I have a regular size television and everything. So, and then with the coronavirus, I've just gone nuts, like binge watching <laughs> all this stuff on TV. Because <laughs> what else are you going to do, you know? Exactly. So what show has been your favorite or what movie has been your favorite so far? Um, well, I really, I like uh, Flora, uh, La Casa de las Flores and that next season starts on the 23rd. So I've put an, uh, I, I've got a notification coming when it starts so I can see it. But I also did really like this series that I found, um, Las Chicas de Cable, but it's a Spain, uh, a Spain Spanish, so I needed the English subtitles in order to understand them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I did mention that you saw La Casa de Flores and Las Chicas de Cable, so how's it been like navigating the different accents now? Because La Casa de Flores is very Mexican, and then you have yeah. 
is a table, which is Spanish from Spain. Yeah. So um, with La Casa de las Flores, my favorite person on there is Paula because she, she because she's on Xana, Xanax, she over enunciates everything. So she's very easy to understand. But then when I watched um, La, uh, Las Chicas de Cabla, and at first I like, could barely understand every, anything. And I had the titles on in Spanish, the subtitles, and that just wasn't working. So I changed it to English. And all, after a while, I started to get, I could hear the difference. And then actually what there was, there was a new character that was introduced in one season. I don't remember which one. And they didn't say right away, but I'm like, oh, he talks different. And I couldn't figure out why. And then all of a sudden it came out that he was from Argentina. So then I was just proud of myself that I could actually recognize that there was a different accent, you know, within the, in the series. So That's great. That's wonderful. I mean, it's, it, it's really good because, I mean, uh, being, I mean, you work closely with the Mexico City office, right? Yeah. yeah. Any other offices with your, um, with your company? Yeah, we have a we have a small office in Buenos Aires too. There's two people in it, and um, the one salesperson. Uh, beginning of the year, I had I I don't think he knew I was taking Spanish classes, and um, uh, I had I had just quickly because I decided at the beginning of the year I'm going to start to try and write my emails in Spanish, and then I was gonna I I would they could like make fun of them or like I would maybe I'd have to translate like Lynn I don't know what you're talking about here but it, you know I figured it's another way to try to you know and I had said something oh I accidentally wished him a happy birthday instead of a happy new year but my birthday is on new year's eve anyway so kind of why I was like a mess mm -hmm. and so I kept up t speaking to trying to write in in Spanish and he's replying in English and and all of a sudden whoever else was on it was like Lynn you don't listen to Sante blah 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 you know so um just last week mm -hmm. he he had said that you know if I if I needed a language partner and I said well everybody in the Mexico City office is helping so you can be in the rotation now so he he's going to be my language partner for the first time tomorrow oh wow that's awesome and I mean that's really cool because now like you're gonna have exposure to different accents and ways of speaking and everything like that that'd be really interesting because yeah. it's at LALC um Mara does try like she has a very like strong Argentinian accent which she actually I don't know if you know she mutes whenever she's teaching so she, she changes like 180 like if she's talking you're speaking to another Argentinian she'll switch or another native Spanish speaker like um in Argentina they use voz instead of tu. yeah yeah so like it's really interesting at least for me as her employee to see like oh um she'll speak to you all and it's very muted and then with me it's like show and then on top of that is vos and instead of tienes es tenes and things like that so it's really interesting to see. Yeah. yeah you know like um when when she and I have class and she's speaking to me in Spanish I I get it but then I was and I, we had one of those weekly get togethers before we all went into a hideout or quarantine. And they had been in one of those groups with two, two women from maybe Colombia or Peru. And they were speaking slow enough or what have you. So I was understanding our conversation, you know, and then Mara came over and then all of a sudden it was like, bah, 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 bah. and I just sat there like, now I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. No, um, it does happen where like you hear the different registers and that happens with us in English too, oh. right? Revert from like one register to another register. But I guess in this, in, in the United States is really different because it'd be like, if you were an American who also just happened to be British and all of a sudden you go between British and American accent. So yeah. Well, I, I suppose when your husband talks to rel relatives in Arkansas, you can, you can hear the difference in his voice. Yeah. His vocal. yeah. I, I hear it. Like it, it's still allegedly. Back here. <laughs> hi. I was trying to say hi early, earlier, and Vanessa kept shooting me off. <laughs> oh, that's quite all right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, no, that does happen when he talks um, to his family, but he still has somewhat of a muted accent a little bit. So, um, same thing when I'm with her family, I can sometimes communicate with them. It's usually one on one, and then as soon as a couple people walk up and they start speaking like with other family members, I'm just like lost. Like, left yeah, they all pick up a couple of words. Yeah, all right. Well, then, um, yeah, so like 
what's been a highlight at LALC for you? Like, I know you mentioned um, all these things you like about it, but like what moment at LALC has been like, kind of like the aha moment that you're like, I'm, you know, I feel like this is really working and like you kind of like a moment you've been proud of with your progress with learning. I think, I think it was maybe a month or so ago. And I has, I was practicing my, my homework and the partner questions that I had for my homework with one of my colleagues. And um, I wouldn't say it's a joke, but I said something that was meant to be funny and it was, you know? And so when I always feel, I felt that way when I was learning German that when I could be funny in, in German, then I was starting to really get it, you know? So it was like another step in progress type of thing. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah, like humor is always like the hardest Thing to translate so the fact that yeah. that is just you know wonderful and you said that happened like one of the like the food events or which uh, no it was when I was talking to one of my colleagues on the phone you know and we were going through my homework and the list of questions and the one question was like uh who in your family who in your family do you like look the most alike and I had said I had told them that I looked the most like my my dad I said, but not only that, but our personalities are very similar. And I said, that that's not a good thing. You know, just ask my mother. Mm -hmm. And I said that she always calls me little Jack because that's what his name is. His name was Jack, you know. So that's when he started laughing. I was like, oh, the can you Jack? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's that's really cool. Like, um, and obviously right now that we're in quarantine, like this is kind of like, it's harder to kind of like, some people, they really want to travel and that's like their goal for like Spanish and everything like that. The reason they're speaking Spanish and that's their goal. Um, so I'm going to, I'll ask you like, you know, once this is over, hopefully soon, what would be the first place you would go? Lose your skills. Um, well, I probably the first place I would go is to Mexico because of work, obviously. Um, if it was for personal reasons, I kind of, I've always kind of wanted to to visit Buenos Aires and partly a lot of it has to do with because I'm a history buff and a lot of the history about the city is um, fascinating to me and the, the migration of the people. So. Oh yeah. To Argentina. In general. Yeah. Yeah. It's very like um, interesting, like, uh, story with immigration in general and like, you know, population that, that's there, like everyone's, basically from Europe for the most part so yeah there um well cool um did you want to add anything else to you know LLC, any thoughts on it like I've, I've got all the answers that you wrote and you know and these were my follow-up questions for you yeah um no I mean I'm, I know you're using this um you know in your newsletter and for prom promotion but so maybe one of the other things I just like to say to that is that you know I had when I initially started, I had paid for lessons. I, I don't know. And I, I and in my head, I think we're about to the end of what the lessons are I paid for. And I plan on renewing what it is I'm doing because I'm enjoying it. So, yeah, definitely. Um, and so, I mean, we are doing a newsletter. It's not so much. I wouldn't say it's like promotional purposes so much, but I think it's a, but it does help. Right. Yeah. Um, but more than anything, um, I would say the reason why we're doing this as well is just because we really do want to reach out to our students in, in a way that um, we still feel connected. And a lot of that is really important right now, especially with the quarantine going on. And like more than ever, you know, human connection, I feel, is, is really important. So it, it was okay. one that Mara and I were like, yeah, this helps us. But I also it's, um, it's one of those things like we don't have the wine appreciation anymore. And that was meant for you. That was meant for the students. So it's just like, it's, it's a great way to connect with people. And, um, you know, it's, it's, and I, I've heard a lot from our students who've said, like, you know, we, they have fun with us. So not only do they learn, but they have fun with us. And this is something to look forward to. Which, yeah, that's why it, that's why it's, it, it's good as far as learning is concerned, because it is fun. It's not, you know, when you can make learning fun, I think people get more out of it and especially again back to the effect that most of this the students are also working full-time too so they need an outlet you know definitely an outlet and this is fun and yeah you know, a better way to like you know spend you know time like having fun and learning a different language which is really useful in the united states 
Yeah, I'm kind of bummed, you know, because I, I feel like they're going to probably close down or cancel most of the street festivals this summer. And I was kind of hoping that that would have been maybe one of our outings with the LALC, you know, as, you know, if there was an ethnic one that was um, suitable, that we'd, ha we'd get a group of people together. Well, there's actually, um, well, even if that's the case in September, and hopefully by September, maybe this is not the case anymore, but like September is actually a really important month for a lot of Latin American countries, since it's a month that a lot of countries gain their independence. So like uh, Pilsen will have like a Mexican Independence Day parade. Um, and then um, around September or yeah, I'm pretty sure in September, like, or, like closer to October, there's also a festival in Humboldt Park like a Puerto Rico, a Puerto Rican festival. Okay. Um, so hopefully, even if it's not summer, September is still kind of like kind of starting fall. So hopefully we were able to go and organize something for that. Yeah, that would be cool. All right. Well, Lynn, thank you so much. And um, we're, I'm going to draft this up and then let you know, and then also just show you um, the piece before we, we uh, send it out and then just let okay. me know. Okay. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, bye. Oh, actually, I was wondering, could you send us a picture um, of you so we can put it on the newsletter? Oh, yeah, sure. Let me try to find one that isn't horrible. Okay, all right. Which <laughs> is tonight to the BYOB? What time is the one tonight? That's 7.30. Okay, because I have two different times in my calendar. If I come, it's going to be, I probably won't stay the whole time. There's one at 5.30. Oh, I, I do have two in my calendar. Okay. Yeah, you can go to the one with Mara if that's, like, you know, easier for you because, like, uh, it is earlier anyway. So, but, yeah, there's also one at 7.30. Yeah, I have a 7 a.m. conference call tomorrow, so. Probably the 5.30 would be best. <laughs> All right. Bye. Okay.